this. Oh, to be still. All right. I got curls, curls today. I don't know if y'all could tell, but my hair turned out really curly this time. Almost too curly for my liking, but it's whatever. Um, ooh, let's see if this is gonna move because I gotta grab the book. Nope, it's not gonna move. I had the book sitting behind the phone. Okay. So, good afternoon. Since it's the weekend, I'm gonna be reading out of Get What You Want, The Art of Making and Manifesting Your Intentions by Tony Burroughs. We're getting to the end of this book. I think I only have about three or four more parts to this one. Okay. Projections. It appears to be dualistic, but it is not. Where do our thoughts and feelings come from? We tend to think they are, we tend to think that they all originate from us and from the point of view that it's all one or it's all God. That is true. Realistically, however, most of us are caught up in our earthly lives, having forgotten what it's like to experience the oneness of all things. We have separated ourselves from our surroundings and then extended that separation by naming and defining all of the objects and creatures around us. Of course, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's all here for us to enjoy. However, we tend to get mixed up when we ascribe the properties of one world onto another. Said another way, we get confused when we tell ourselves that it's all God, and then in the very next moment, someone crosses our path and we find ourselves making a judgment of them. It might help if we were to explore where the judgment originated. Our judgments and their accompanying feelings come from one of three places. Number one, <clears throat> from us. Number two, directly from others. Number three, from the great etheric substance that invisibly surrounds us. If a judgment is originating from us and we are holding on to it, we can be assured that we have some strong prejudices that need to be addressed before we are going to evolve into a lighter state of being. Indeed, judgments can only happen in a world where separation exists. There has to be a me and a them if a judgment is occurring. And such an arrangement keeps our oneness at bay. Many of our judgments do not originate with us. As an example, I went to the post office yesterday to mail my book orders. And as I approached the lady behind the counter, I had the thought, her hair sure looks weird. Now a part of me is trained to refrain from making judgments and to see everyone in their highest light. So I immediately wondered where that thought came from. The first answer I came up with was that it was coming directly from her. She was projecting it and I was just picking up on her projection. That kind of thing happens all the time, especially when we are in direct contact with others. Or it could have come from the air around me, the ethers. We are all swimming through all the ethers. We are all swimming through all the time. Our streets and roads are littered with thought projections. We get impatient or mad in traffic, often thinking that our energy feelings 
and thoughts are coming from us, when in truth they are coming from the collective etheric stream of fearful thoughts that inhabit the areas we are driving through. Projections of others engendering road rage or fender benders or being followed or pulled over gather around our highways and byways and we move through this invisible stream every time we drive somewhere. In other words, it's not us. We're just using our mental and emotional antenna to pick up on the projection that have been placed there in the past. Here's what Li Ching had to say about this a while back. When you become a truly conscious being, you'll have moments of relapse when you forget where your good is coming from and old rules will come to the surface. It is like when you are looking into the eye of the dragon. There is much goodness and nobleness in the dragon and at the same time it can be the dangerous fire breather as well. These are simply the dualities that face this world today, that face people like yourselves who have the highest and best good involved in their lives and wanting to talk to people and wanting to feel free to move about in this world and wanting to help people understand what it is they're creating with their everyday thoughts. These things are noble causes and like with the dragon it is the noble and good side that calls forth the peaceful warrior. There are times when people must take up the position of the warrior to create peace because sometimes the dark can overcome the light. When you are a conscious being, you know that it is all the same thing. You know that there is really no evil and there is no good. But you also know that there is always a battle going on between the conscious beings and the unconscious beings the angel people and the animal beings. My intention for today is, or as I always say, my affirmation for today is, I affirm that I remember where my goodness and my nobility are coming from. So that was quite a mouthful of information. And I think it, it will be best for anyone who watches this to go back and listen again and ponder it and meditate on it and see how you feel about it. Because that's one that I really can't guide or lead in one direction or another is one for you to be able to contemplate within yourself and see if it resonates with you or if it doesn't. Not everything I read resonates with me necessarily. So that's the beauty of freedom. As human beings, we can reflect on something, decide if it resonates with us or not, and then choose to incorporate the information in the way we decide to be in the world. So that being said, I am sending out love, light, and healing energy. Ask that you pay it forward and pass it on. And until tomorrow, peace. Enjoy the rest of your Friday.